Hey there everybody and welcome back to a new school year on the Mr. Sin channel. Today we start our journey of AP Human Geography and it's going to be quite a ride. Throughout this school year we're going to be covering every single topic that you need to know in order to do well in your class and also on the AP test in May. So without further ado, let's start learning about topic 1.1 where we're going to be talking about what else? Maps. Now there is a bunch of different maps out there and each map we look at throughout this course is going to be presenting us with different types of information and each map has different strengths and weaknesses. It's really important that we can identify these different strengths and weaknesses when viewing a map because we're going to have to be analyzing maps in order to make conclusions and to be able to understand different spatial relationships throughout this whole year. Some maps use data to help illustrate different patterns and spatial connections within a geographic area. Maps like a chloropleth map or a flow line map or a cartogram or graduated symbol map. Each of these maps are trying to present the reader with a certain topic, hence why it's a thematic map. It's focused around one theme. We also have reference maps that do a great job at getting us from point A to point B. These maps aren't using data. They're great for us to better understand what's happening on the Earth's surface. There's no theme that's being presented here. We're just viewing a geographic area. Regardless of what map you're using, there's no doubt that maps are powerful tools. And geographers use maps all the time. Now, maps can be used for something as simple as going from my house to Chipotle. Or they could be used to better understand different types of elevation if I'm looking at a topographical map. But we could also use them to understand birth rates and poverty and education, cancer rates, how we trade with other countries. In order to really show you exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to count to five. While I'm doing this, I want you to view the maps on the screen right now and try to see if you notice anything about these maps. Okay, time's up. Now, this is a YouTube video. If you need more time, just pause it. But did you start to see some connections? Did you notice that a lot of the countries that have the highest growth rate also unfortunately have a lot of kids dying? And they also have high rates of poverty. That could be something that's worth exploring. Maybe there's a connection between a high NIR, a high growth rate, and high amounts of poverty, and unfortunately child mortality. These are concepts we're gonna be exploring, and maps can visualize that. Now that we can see some of the ways that maps can present us data and trends and be used, we also have to go over a couple other aspects that you should be on the lookout for when you're analyzing a map. First one to know is the difference between absolute distance and relative distance. Now, absolute distance is dealing in quantitative terms, while relative distance is actually dealing in qualitative terms. When you're looking at a map, if you're trying to understand how far away something is in terms of miles or kilometers, that's absolute distance. While relative distance is going to be looking at time. How long does it take us to get somewhere? Or what direction are we going using that compass rose? You'll also notice that items on maps can be clustered or dispersed. All that means is if it's clustered, things are really packed together. There's not a lot of space space in between different items. On the other hand, if they're dispersed, there's a lot of space between them. Now, the one thing you really need to look out for when you're using a map is distortion. Every map struggles with this. It might be in the direction, the distance, the shape, or even just the area. Distortion impacts maps because it's hard to take a globe and put it onto a flat surface. So each map has to make certain compromises. Now, oftentimes when they do that, they'll end up minimizing the distortion in one area, but then they'll increase the distortion in another or they'll make the map more difficult to read. Or maybe they're gonna cut off just parts of the earth in general in order to try and remove it. So different cartographers have used different techniques in order to try and make the most accurate map. For example, when looking at the Mercator map, what do you notice about Greenland and what do you notice about Africa? Psst, if you didn't know, this one's Greenland and this one's Africa. If we are just to base our answer off the Mercator map, you're gonna probably come to the conclusion that Greenland is significantly larger than Africa. And that could not be further from the truth. Africa is way larger than Greenland. Look at all the countries you can actually fit inside of Africa. Greenland is tiny, but distortion here distorts the truth. And so we have to always be cognizant of that. Hey, sorry for interrupting the flow of the video, but I do have to highlight that there's a bunch of map projections that you need to know about. I just mentioned the Mercator map projection, and early in this video I talked about different thematic maps as well. All of these are important for you to be able to read and understand, and you also have to know the different strengths and weaknesses of each of these maps. And when filming this, it just didn't work for me to put all of that into this one video. Now in future videos when we go into the different topics of AP Human Geography, I'm going to always try to make sure it all fits in one video. But for this one, it just didn't work. So I have two other videos that'll actually talk about the thematic maps and the other map projections specifically. I really recommend you check that out because you're going to need that information as well. 
All right, sorry for the little side note here. Let's get back and look at distortion with thematic maps. So clearly reference maps have some issues with distortion and thematic maps also do as well. When we're creating thematic maps, geographers and cartographers have to make decisions. What ranges should I use to present my data? Is there movement? How am I gonna visualize that movement? What happens to a region on the map that doesn't have any data? All these different things impact how we view the data and the map. And that can lead us to actually come to conclusions that might not be true. For example, take five seconds and look at this map that's showing world religions. What do you notice? Five, four, three, two, one. And that's time. Maybe you notice that for the most of the world, there's actually only one or two religions. Christianity looks like to be the only religion in many parts of the world. And here distortion is actually connected to the scale. We're looking at a small scale map right now, and this is actually having generalizations occur. We're not being able to see a clear picture. If we were to change the scale, from a global scale down to, let's say, a large scale map, which would be more showing a local community, we can actually see that there are tons of different religions. And what we looked at originally turned out to be wrong. At first, we thought it was just one main religion. However, as we zoomed in, we now start to see that there is a large variety of people. And here again, distortion has made it so we're not getting a clear picture of the map. Whenever you are looking at a map, whether it's a reference map or a thematic map, always try and think, what's the map trying to tell me? What is the map trying to say? Look at the title, look at the legend, look at the different shadings and the colors, the symbols, that compass rose, the scale the relationship between items on the map and the Earth's surface. All of these things will help you understand exactly what the map is showing you. And when we do this, you will be amazed at how you can visualize the world and how you'll be able to break down complex issues right in front of you. Hey, you did it! First official video down. Now you might notice right now that there's some review questions on the screen. Fear not, it's not a trick quiz. I mean, it kind of is a pop quiz since you didn't see it coming. But this is a way to check to see, did you understand some of the main components of this video? I'm gonna try to do this in most of our videos. They're just a couple questions and this way you can see if you're really getting the information. Once you think you got the answers, go down to the comment section and see if you got them right. Also, don't forget to subscribe. More videos are coming that are gonna help you succeed in AP Human Geography. And if you're struggling with AP Human Geography, check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great tool to help you study for your class and also get a five on that national exam. All right, thanks so much geographers for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I'll see you online. Wait, 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 I almost forgot. Don't forget to watch the video on map projections and the different thematic maps. You need that information. Again, I'm gonna try not to do that in future videos. Okay, that's all I got for today. Have a great day, geographers. Woo!